Today, the anaconda is counted among the largest snakes in the world because they are many feet long and giant, capable of swallowing even a goat or deer directly. But not many people know that the snake named Titanoboa, found in the period of dinosaurs, was many times bigger than an anaconda. Titanoboa is considered to be the largest snake that has ever existed on Earth, and for this reason, they are also called monster snakes. In this video, we're going to take a closer look into the lives of the Titanoboa. Titanoboa was a giant snake that has since become extinct. From conclusions of body size made from excavated vertebrae, paleontologists have estimated that the body length of the average adult Titanoboa was roughly 42.7 feet, 13 meters, and the average weight was about 1,135 kilograms, making it twice as long as the longest living snake today and almost four times heavier than the giant anaconda. The Titanoboa, whose fossils date back to around 58 to 61 million years ago, existed during the Paleocene period in history. This giant monster snake lived in the jungles of South America, and its fossils were discovered in the Seregin coal mines of La Guajira, Colombia in 2009, where remains of approximately 30 individuals were recovered. Most specimens are made of vertebrae and ribs, which is typical of snake fossils. It's estimated that Titanoboa may have had more than 250 vertebrae. At least one nearly complete specimen with a skull was discovered during the dig. This is amazing as snake jaws are made powerful by their muscles, not their bones. Their skulls are actually remarkably fragile and usually crumble before sediment can build over them. As a result, they don't usually make it into the fossil record. The discovery of the fossils was an intriguing one as it suggested that once upon a time, the area had been home to a sprawling jungle. More digging uncovered remarkable specimens, giant turtles and crocodiles, and some of the first bananas, avocados and bean plants that ever sprouted on Earth. The snake's name was formulated from Titanic Boa, and this giant snake is the largest ever snake to be recorded taking the place of the previous record holder, the African Gigantophus, which came in at 33 feet and weighed 1,000 pounds. Titanoboa's enormous size is thought to be closely tied to the climate of the Paleocene. Snakes, similar to other cold-blooded animals, have metabolic rates that are influenced by the temperature of the ambient environment. To maintain normal growth, snakes must have the proper amount of warmth. A snake would need an exceptionally warm environment, such as the one that characterized the Paleocene, to grow as large as Titanoboa. The coals mined at Seregin are formed from deposits left by an extensive Paleocene swamp, situated along the margins of an ancient shallow sea, which sat at the base of the early precursors of the Andes Mountains. This ancient environment had been similar in composition to the swamps of the Mississippi River Delta or Everglades in North America. However, it was situated in the tropics at the time when the Earth's climate was exceptionally warm. It's believed that the Titanoboa would have spent a majority of its time in the water and went on dry land, slithering around trees near to the water. Due to its incredible size, it's highly unlikely that it would have been capable of climbing trees. Whilst in the water, the Titanoboa snake would have been much more dangerous since its weight was helped by the buoyancy of water. The appearance of this huge snake was dull in color, ranging from a dull brown to grayish black. It had rows of small, sharp teeth growing on its upper and lower jaws, increasing its needs for hunting. Snakes are usually what you would term generalists that will eat whatever they can catch. This is especially true for constrictors that don't rely upon venom to subdue prey and therefore have no reliance upon venom working which may have different effects upon different types of animals. The diet of the Titanoboa consisted of other reptiles of smaller sizes, birds and small crocodiles which it would kill by means of either constricting or blocking the windpipe. Once dead, its prey would be swallowed whole. The characteristic dull color of the Titanoboa made it difficult for the prey to notice it while it slithered through the muddy waters on its approach, therefore giving the snake a chance to pounce. The Titanoboa, just like many other reptiles, had mating seasons. Before the mating season began, the male and female stayed away from each other. When the mating season was about to begin, the female released a certain hormone to notify the males. The males would then fight each other for the female. The winning male fertilizes the eggs. Straight after the fertilization, the female attacks the males and, on occasions, eats them. They would then get into a resting period, which was also the gestation period. It took around seven months before the baby Titanoboa slid out of a tiny membrane on the sides of their mother's bodies.
So why did these monsters go extinct? In simple terms, no one really knows for sure, but there are two main theories. The first is global temperature change. Today we can establish a clear correlation between reptile size and ambient climate temperature. The hotter the climate, the larger the reptiles seem to get. Those in temperature locations and or with a strong seasonal variance between hot and cold seem to stay fairly small. However, as you get nearer the equator, average temperatures rise and seasonal variation is near non-existent due to the simple fact that daylight exposure to the sun is constant. By contrast, extreme north or south latitudes experience extended or reduced daylight hours depending on how the Earth tilts on its rotation as it orbits the Sun on its yearly cycle. Titanoboa being so large has been taken as an indication that the planet had a higher average global temperature during the Paleocene than previously thought. The second theory of Titanoboa's extinction is of course habitat change. Around 60 million years ago, the Seregin Formation was a low-lying coastal plain, covered with lush rainforests that had an extensive system of numerous rivers running across the landscape. In stark contrast to this ancient depiction, the Seregin Formation is today the largest coal mine in Colombia, and is situated much higher above sea level than it was during the Paleocene. The coal of the Seregin Formation is essentially the fossil remains of all the plants and trees that once formed the lush rainforests that would have been present in the time of the Titanoboa. Even among the massive creatures of the ancient rainforest, Titanoboa was king. It was the apex predator of its era, a creature as unquestionably the ruler of its environment as the Tyrannosaurus rex was in its own time. Its astonishing dominance has led some to wonder, what would happen if Titanoboa hadn't gone extinct? What do you think of this impressive beast? Let us know in the comments below and please like this video if you've enjoyed it. If you want to see more videos like this one, then subscribe to Brain Impact for more. Thanks for watching.